Hi there, my name is Andy Young and uh, I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, on this particular video, we're going to see how well this stuff works. Now, this is uh, called Original Cream with a K and it's a fuel tank liner kit. Now, the reason, the reason why I need to... Uh, this. So it says on here, it says uh, prevents rust, leaks and corrosion and it protects new fuel tanks. Now, reading between the lines, this sort of implies that it's a preventative liner as opposed to something that you can put in once your fuel tank has started to leak. This is petrol, this is metal fuel tanks by the way. It says here it creates, uh, sorry, it creates a thick protective layer to prevent rust and corrosion and keeps harmful contaminants from clogging your fuel system. Well, the problem is we have an old, I've been asked to fix up an old XT500 that came across from South Africa. Now when it was in South Africa it had been fully restored and the owner said it looked fantastic. He then left the country for a while and somebody else got their hands on it and they basically rode it and damaged it and caused lots of problems. So when it arrived here in New Zealand, when he shipped it back to, back over here, um, really wasn't quite the bike that he, he thought it was going to be. Now the bike's been stood for a long time and this is the fuel tank. Now it's not in original colours and it's got a little crack somewhere I saw, yeah, it's got a little crack here in the paint and it feels it feels to me like it's full of a lot of filler, a lot of filler in there, um, which is not a good sign at all. But it's also, if you can hear that, there you go, it's full of rust. So I'll put the camera in there with the, with the light on and hopefully you can see a bit of that. But this fuel tank, um, I attempted to fit to the bike after I got it started a couple of years ago for him and I filled the tank with fuel, I started putting fuel in the tank and it, it just ran out the bottom. Not out of the fuel tap, but out of, I think it was one of these mounts where it's welded to the tank, had rusted through. Ooh, yeah, oh man, doesn't look very good at all, does it? I don't know if you can see that or not, we'll do a close up for you. Now obviously this tank, if we can get it to seal, then the tank will get repainted and it'll go back on the bike, but man, these things, they create a lot of vibration as well, these little, these fibred singles. So even if it doesn't leak now, it might well leak in the future, but he's been looking around for, an, for a, a good second-hand tank and just can't get hold of one. So if anybody out there knows somebody that's got an XT500 fuel tank that's in good nick, please get in contact because that could solve this problem because I'd... I'd I'll be amazed if this works, in all honesty, you know, under these circumstances. Now, we are, we are also planning to put the same stuff in Ben's TDR 250 fuel tank to preserve that, because those fuel tanks are getting very, very hard to get hold of, and his tank doesn't leak. It's actually in pretty good nick, so that that's, I think, what this product's designed for, not to fix a leaking tank. Okay, well, let me show you the problems with this tank before we even contemplate putting this stuff in. Here we go. These two mounts at the front, they bolt to the frame. And if I just scratch all that away, I, th I think that the weld here has cracked on this tank. So we're gonna have to put a bit of fuel in it and see where it's leaking from, I think, before we go any further. I think we need to really assess just what's required here because it might just be a case of having to reconstruct a certain part of the fuel tank to seal it up. Actually weld in some new stuff. Okay, and I think this side is probably just about as bad actually. We spent a long time in storage of this uh, fuel tank with no fuel in it at all, which is one of the worst things you can do. Oh man, lots of 
bottles of rust. It looks really, really bad. Just down here, actually in the cavity. Down here. I mean, there's no point if it's just about to have a great big hole appear in it. There's no point in trying to put it back together and or seal it up. You know, it wouldn't be that hard to actually cut that fuel tank out around there and weld in a new piece. Because the seam itself here, this seam doesn't look too bad, and that's that's the important part, isn't it? You know, we can't really reconstruct that with a MIG. Or I can't anyway. Hmm. Yeah. You never quite know how these jobs are going to turn out until you get into them. I know Graham, the owner of this, has been asking me for ages to try and sort this out for him. Okay, well I think what we'll do is we'll mount the tank somehow, we'll chuck a bit of fuel in and we'll see, we'll try and see where it's coming from around this area here. And see if it's both sides or just one side. Here we go. Okay, so I've mounted the tank on an axle stand and a few blocks of wood. Now, it's not quite as it would sit on the bike, because I don't want to have to put it, you know, fill it half full of fuel to get it, the fuel level up to where it's going to leak. Um, so the back end of the tank is a little bit higher, but we'll put a couple of litres of fuel in there, or we'll start pouring fuel in here, and then we can see whereabouts at the front end of the tank it's starting to leak from. Okay, here goes. I don't really want petrol all over the workshop, but we'll see what happens. Well, there you go. We've already got a leak out of this side. This side's still pretty dry, but when I'm pouring the fuel in, the fuel realistically is only going into this side of the fuel tank because the the bridge is so high. Okay, well, well let's try and slosh them across to that side, I think. Just going to tilt the tank over a little bit, see if that's going to help. Definitely. Oh, there we go. Look. Okay. So we've got fuel leaking from both sides of these mounts. It's a pretty serious leak, isn't it? And, you know, as a welder, I'm really tempted to weld the tank up, cut those mounts off, re-weld the tank, replace all the knackered metal, weld the mounts back on, and then put the sealant in. It's a big job, though. Well, I've just tipped the fuel back out of the fuel tank, and that is just some of the rust that's in that fuel tank. It's pretty horrendous, to be perfectly honest. I'm really dubious about whether this is going to be sufficient to fix this particular fuel tank. Personally, I think it's far too far gone for something like that to cure it. I'm also a bit concerned, actually, if I start to weld that up, knowing how much rust has come out of that fuel tank, how many more places around that tank is it rusted through and it's just the paint that's holding the fuel in? You know, I could cut it open and find that it's, um, it's just not repairable. It's just too far gone. I'm not a panel beater, I can't make shaped pieces of steel to match the contours of that fuel tank. I couldn't make a new fuel tank, I'm not that skilled. At the moment he has a tank for his bike. If I start cutting it open and it's too big a job, it's too far gone, he hasn't got a tank at all. I think I need to speak to the customer on this. I'll get back to you. Just a little look, oh my god, inside the fuel tank. Now, just down there is about the area, if I can get to focus on that bit, that bit down there, look, is about where the mounts are that are currently leaking. 
Okay, I'm back. It's about two days since I uh, last looked at this XT500 fuel tank and yes, it's leaking fuel. Yes, it's badly corroded. But because of the design of the tank with the, those two mounts at the front that actually bolt to the frame of the bike and it's a single cylinder engine, lots of vibration on those old, old XT500s, uh, I believe that there is some metal fatigue cracks that have also developed within the fuel tank. And I think, you know, I've come to the decision now that putting the, uh, the cream, the tank sealant, in there, yes, it might work short term, but I think with the vibration of the fuel tank and those metal fatigue cracks, it's not going to last very long. In fact, it's just going to be a complete waste of time and a waste of money, in all honesty. So, I'm going to bite the bullet, and this may destroy the fuel tank because, um, you know, it, it's sort of irreparable. In, you know, there's a potential that this could destroy the tank and render the tank useless, should I say. Uh, but I'm going to cut off the uh, or grind away the wells to remove those two mounts off the tank that'll give us a better view of the corrosion uh, damage that's hidden behind those mounts uh, with a view to cutting out that part of the fuel tank and welding in some new metal and then welding those mounts back into position now the biggest problem is if the majority of the fuel tank or the areas that i need to weld to that metal has corroded so badly that I can't get a decent weld, then that's going to render the tank scrap, unfortunately. And there's nothing more I can do for the customer. Um, it's a bit of a punt, but at this point in time, we've got nothing to lose. The tank is essentially junk, and if we can make it work again so that he can get the bike put back together and sold, then we will. No harm in trying. We've got nothing to lose. Okay, so uh, let's mark up the fuel tank as to where we're going to grind uh, and get on with the job. Here we go. Okay, well these are the two mounts we're going to have to remove. And both sides is leaking fuel, so they've both got to come off. Um, just to make it a bit clearer on the camera, we've got a weld line that runs down there. And for this side, so you can see, there's also additional welds here and here. So... I've got my work cut out now, I'm trying to get in there and grind those out because they're not particularly accessible to be perfectly honest with the grinder. It's very limited access. And the part of the tank that I'm looking to replace, I think really, will be sort of you know around this area here. Not quite up to the seam. I'm going to be welding just, just this side of the seam, I think. But if that's real thin, then I'm out to weld on the seam, which I'd rather not do. And uh, probably going to come around somewhere like this. You can see there's definitely a stress crack down there. And, and, and somewhere, I think, around this height, it's more on that bend. I think once we get into that weld there, there's no flex and there won't be a problem. So we're really looking at a very small piece of the fuel tank, and I think... With a bit of jiggly pokery, I can probably remake that shape, and it doesn't have to be that critical because most of it's hidden by this bracket anyway. As long as we can re weld the bracket back on and we can seal the fuel tank, I'm really not too bothered. Okay, grinding time. Okay, well, that's the two brackets off the tank. Not a pretty sight. Um, the left-hand side here was pretty bad. Uh, obviously, you can see that uh, you know destroyed that part of the tank. So we're going to have to just mark that out, just to cut all that bit out there, and make a new panel. This side's not quite so bad, but it was still going to cut out. I think down to about here. Any of this suspect metal, uh, which looks pretty rusty, to be honest, we're going to cut out and we'll make some new pieces and uh, we want to cut the steel so it's a nice 
uh, sharp cut as opposed to this sort of chamfered grind that I've got at the moment and then at least that way we've got maximum metal to weld to it. Actually it doesn't look as bad as what I thought it was going to be. Okay so the next step mark this out and do some cutting and I might need to find the Dremel see if we've got some Dremel parts and then we can maybe cut it a bit easier. Okay so I think realistically we want to be looking at like you know, something along these sort of lines to cut out. And we'll just tidy that bit up there, I think. Yeah, maybe even, maybe even like that, actually. Try and minimise the amount we're taking out. And then on this side, again, we're going to have to, all that rusty area is going to come out, so we'll take it across there. No point making a plate that we can't weld in because there's now no metal to weld it to. That looks pretty good, so we'll bring it across, bring it across, and then we'll just tidy up that bit. I want to stay away from this, this seam here if I can. Cool. Okay, time to uh, dig out the old Dremel and see if we can tidy that up. going but that uh, that little Dremel that I have is absolutely perfect for this kind of work and you can see in there now look that it's all cleaned up and basically ready now to accept a new piece of steel that I can weld in obviously I've still got the other side to do there's no point in filming that because you'll be getting bored already I'm sure and I'll also give these little brackets a bit of a clean up too so that they're ready to weld back on and I did put some marks on the tank with the infamous yellow paint pen 
so hopefully I can get these back in the right position. Uh, what I might do is refit the tank, just spot weld these on, put the tank back on the bike and just make sure that everything lines up, but it pretty confident it will do. Okay, well, you guys pop off and go watch Ariana Grande or whatever you like and have a cup of tea while I finish this off and I'll be back soon. Uh, back soon. Cheers. Man, this, this little Dremel is really, really useful for this kind of job and I don't always use it that often, but, um, you know, perfect for this kind of thing. Right, so, what have we got? Well, that's both the holes in the tank now cut out, cleaned up, and ready for the new bits of steel to go in. Also, we've got the two brackets, and I've, I've cleaned those up really well, so they're ready for welding into position after we've fitted the, uh, the new bits of the fuel tank. And looking at the old, the old bits that came out, these are the two bits that um, essentially we've removed, it's not really, really bad. I, I have a sneaky suspicion that the reason why it was leaking was down to those stress cracks as opposed to actual corrosion holes, which is great news for the rest of the fuel tank because it means that there's probably still a bit of metal left, which that, um, that sealant hopefully will preserve for a few more years. And then God knows what it'll do. Okay, right. Let's find some tin, cut it to shape. Here goes. Right, get one of the bits we've cut out. I'm just going to flatten that out. And that sort of gives us a rough idea of how much material we need. We're going to have to go a little bit bigger, I think. It doesn't really matter if there's, much of a, if there's a bit of an overlap. So, take that down to there. And that, something like that. Just come around and put a maybe... 5 mil, you can always cut it down later on. Right, there's going to be a fold in there. Okay, let's get that cut out. Okay, well that's the first one cut out. I'll uh, cut the second one out, give them a clean up, and then we'll work out where the fold's going to be. Now I'm not too concerned about getting that nice arc because you know, it takes ages of hammer and a bit of a, what did we used to use at school? Oh, like a sandbag, you know, and you're hammering away and stretching the metal. Don't need to do that because this is all hidden. I just need to seal the fuel tank and make it strong. And let's face it, most of this plate is going to be hidden by those brackets anyway. Right, one more to cut out. Okay, well, pretty sure that this one <laughs> relates to this side. And as you can see, it's quite a bit larger than the... Um, piece we've cut out. I just want to, it's going to sit on the inside when I weld it into place. I just want to give it basically, mark it up where I want that, um, that fold to be. So we can go down a little bit more. I don't need to tr bother trimming this bit. I'd say around about, maybe there's enough material. Yeah, I think so. Around about there. We've gone with the yellow pen now, and we're going to scribe it because we need it more accurate. Okay. Now that fold is going to come straight across. It's not going to have a radius like it used to have. Okay. So we need to basically go from there to there, and it needs to be not a sharp 90 fold. It needs to have a bit of a bit of a radius to it. So maybe I find a bit of bar. A bit of 10 mil bar or something that I can use to form this on. Hopefully, okay. Right, not entirely sure how well this is going to work, but we'll give it a go. Not too bad. Right, see how that fits. Okay, so I'll just put a bolt on there now so I can manipulate it around. It's just, this is just a starting point. It gives us an idea of sort of how it's going to all come together. Now we've obviously got a massive hole here. So I'm just going to bend back the middle section of that, uh, that folded part. So sort that out. 
a little bit of hit and miss with this really. Right, so see how that looks. No struggle to be getting in, sure. Yeah. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad at all. And we need to remember, obviously, where the um, where the brackets mount on, because they're going to need some material around here to weld on. So we need to basically have something up here, don't we? So maybe I'm going to have to put a two separate folds. Ah, uh, back. Okay, so maybe if I flatten that back out again, and we put like two folds, one like that, and one like that, that should help. And then we're going to need to have to split this, and we'll have to weld that up later on. Probably won't fit in now. There we go. Well, that's a lot better. A much smaller gap to, to be filling up. So we can just give these a bit of a tweak in the middle here. And down here, and then think, things are going to be a lot better. Looking much, much better is that now. Okay, well I think we're about ready to weld that into position. Okay, I'm just going to tack weld it in first. Okay, well that's the first one tack welded in. Now it looks horrendous, but you know, it's amazing what you can do with a MIG. So, let me get that welded up, and we'll see what it looks like when I've finished. Right, oh, scruffy Andy. Okay, so that's the first one welded in. There you go, not too bad. Not too bad because I'm using 0.8 MIG wire. Stuff for doing girders and things, really. But um, does it need to be fuel tight? Well, not really, because we're going to be putting in that, um, that sealant. But I reckon it's pretty damn good. But we will give it a test later on, once we've finished the whole, the whole thing. We can always put the odd little spot weld here and there. Okay, so I still have exactly the same process to do on this side, so I'll do that now. And then we can get the mounts welded on. Right, see you shortly. We are so close. There you go, that's the second one all welded in. Now I know the welds are not fantastic, but I don't use a TIG, that's a MIG. And uh, yeah, it's going to work. I know this is going to work. And you won't see any of that. Ah, it's not that bad. I don't think it's that bad. It works. See what you like. 
<laughs> I don't do body work. Okay, so I think the next step, just to be on the safe side, is we'll bring the bike down from the other garage, put it in the, in the stand, and I'll bolt on to the frame these. And then we'll lower the tank down, get the tank to where it should be, and then we'll spot weld these in position with these on the frame, bolt of the frame, take it all off, weld it up. I think that's the only way of making absolutely certain these brackets are in the right place. Okay, <laughs> there she is. Right, the tank is bolted on and located at the rear. So all that's left to do now is, uh, and obviously are, as are these two brackets, and I've spaced them out on the frame. It's about five mil spaces either side. Unfortunately, I haven't got the original Yamaha mounts, the grommets. They're still at his house customer's house so uh, all we need to do now is basically align these mounts make sure they're both at the same both sit at the same angle and then I can just spot weld those to the fuel tank both sides take them off weld them up chuck some paint on it well actually we'll test it first and then I'll paint it sorted Okay, so not looking too bad at all. We've just got a bit of welding to do to weld those brackets back into position. Shouldn't take five minutes to do. Just tap that down into place, get rid of that. There's a bit of a gap just under there, but we'll get that sorted out. Cool, okay, we'll get that one welded up as well. Ooh, we're almost there. Just take a while to do this kind of stuff. <clears throat> okay, well there you go. They're all welded in. Actually turned out pretty good, I reckon. I haven't given it a wire brush yet. Uh, I'll do that. I'll give it a little bit of a clean up, and then we'll stick it on some blocks. Now, obviously, I don't want to fill this with petrol again, and uh, so I reckon water will do just fine. Fill it with water, and then we'll leave it to dry overnight, and then tomorrow. On the next video, providing it's watertight, or there's only a tiny, 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 tiny leak, uh, we can then apply that cream uh, tank sealant. Okay, well, let's see if my welding's any good and holds that water in. Okay, here goes. Oh, we have a little leak. Just from up there, look. That weld. Right hand side looks pretty good. Now we'll keep going, we'll get it all in. There's a couple of litres of water, so I'm going to chuck it all in. Tell you what, one out of two ain't bad actually. So a little bit of weld to go on that seam just up there, look. And then I think, by the looks of it, 
We're all good. That's quite a big hole, actually. Okay, round two. Now I've got the camera now just on the side that was leaking earlier on, so let's, uh, well, you tell me if you can see any water or not. Okay, well that's two litres gone in. What can you see? Oh, that looks pretty dry. Excellent. Wow, that's taken me about four hours to do. Quite a big job, uh, but some great news. Successful. That fuel tank wasn't, although it looked really bad, second time round, it's now watertight or should I say petrol tight that's the idea and that's before we put the um, the actual fuel tank liner in there now don't forget this whole process the only reason why I've welded that fuel tank up or had to replace some of the steel work was because it, it was leaking fuel really badly and the metal had fatigue there were cracks in there around the front mounts so if we, if we put this stuff in then um, sure, you know, it might be a little bit elastic and it's going to be able to survive for a short time. But if those are the mounts holding the fuel tank on, then, you know, they're going to wobble around and things are going to eventually give and it's going to start to leak fuel again. And that wasn't the object of the mission. The object of the mission is to fix the fuel tank and not have to fix it again in six months' time. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of this video. This video is going to be welding up an XT500 fuel tank in preparation for applying the original cream fuel tank liner. The second video, which I'll do later in the week, will be the application of that liner kit. And then we'll see, well, we won't see how good it is anymore because the fuel tank doesn't leak anymore. But at least I can show you how to use, uh, how to apply the kit. It is a three stage kit and it's really important. It stresses so many times on the instructions that you must follow the instructions to the letter, otherwise it isn't going to work very well. Okay, well, my name is Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. You've been watching my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, I hope you found this video helpful and interesting, and it also, you know, it just gives you an insight into the fact that if you've got a rusty old fuel tank and, um, you know, it's got a bit of a leak somewhere, don't despair. There are people out there, probably a lot better than I am, that can weld it up for you. <laughs> this isn't my main job, don't forget. I don't weld fuel tanks every single day. I do weld, but not that thin stuff, you know. It's, that fuel tank was pretty thin. Okay, well, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then why not click on subscribe? You'll see a little gear icon. Click on the gear icon, and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. And that way, our friends down at YouTube will send you an email whenever I upload any new videos. Also, you'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter, and feel free to communicate through any of those portals. However, if you wouldn't mind, first contact through YouTube on the comments section, and that way, if I give you the answer to a particular problem, or I give you, give you a suggestion, then maybe the same answer will help somebody else out. And it's right where the video is stored, uh, so it's pretty obvious to come across. If it's tucked away in Facebook or Google+, Plus, then they're never going to see it. So, you know, it just doesn't help other people as well. Uh, what else? I think. I think that's about it. Okay, well, it's a Sunday. I'm back at Unitech working tomorrow, so I quite fancy a bit of a hot shower and chilling out for the evening. Although, guess what? I've got another video to edit now. All right, crew, catch you later. Cheers. Over and out.